Section 7 of The New Life by Vita Nuova. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mary J. The New Life, La Vita Nuova by Dante Alighieri. Translated by Dante Gabriel Rossetti. Section 7. A few days after this, my body became afflicted with a painful infirmity, whereby I suffered bitter anguish for many days, which at last brought me unto such weakness that I could no longer move. And I remember that on the ninth day, being overcome with intolerable pain, a thought came into my mind concerning my lady. But when it had a little nourished this thought, my mind returned to its brooding over mine enfeebled body. And then, perceiving how frail a thing life is, even though health keep with it, the matter seemed to me so pitiful that I could not choose but weep, and weeping I said within myself, certainly it must some time come to pass that the very gentle beatrice will die then feeling bewildered i closed mine eyes and my brain began to be in travail as the brain of one frantic and to have such imaginations as here follow and at the first it seemed to me that i saw certain faces of women with their hair loosened which called out to me thou shalt surely die after the which other terrible and unknown appearances said unto me thou art dead at length as my fantasy held on in its wanderings i came to be i knew not where and to behold a throng of dishevelled ladies wonderfully sad who kept going hither and thither weeping then the sun came out so that the stars showed themselves and they were of such a colour that i knew they must be weeping and it seemed to me that the birds fell dead out of the sky and that there were great earthquakes with that while i wandered in my trance and was filled with a grievous fear i conceived that a certain friend came unto me and said hast thou not learned she that was thine excellent lady hath been taken out of life then i began to weep very piteously and not only in mine imagination but with mine eyes which were wet with tears and i seemed to look towards heaven and to behold a multitude of angels who were returning upwards having before them an exceedingly white cloud and these angels were singing together gloriously and the words of their song were these osanna in excelsis and there was no more that i heard then my heart that was so full of love said unto me it is true that our lady lieth dead and it seemed to me that I went to look upon the body wherein that blessed and most noble spirit had had its abiding place, and so strong was this idle imagining, that it made me to behold my lady in death, whose head certain ladies seemed to be covering with a white veil, and who was so humble of her aspect, that it was as though she had said, I have attained to look on the beginning of peace. And therewithal I came unto such humility by the sight of her, that I cried out upon death, saying, Now come unto me, and be not bitter against me any longer, surely where thou hast been, thou hast learned gentleness wherefore come now unto me who do greatly desire thee seest thou not that i wear thy colour already and when i had seen all those offices performed that are fitting to be done unto the dead it seemed to me that i went back unto mine own chamber and looked up towards heaven and so strong was my fantasy that i wept again in very truth and said with my true voice o oh, excellent soul how blessed is he that now looketh upon thee and as i said these words with a painful anguish of sobbing and another prayer unto death a young and gentle lady who had been standing beside me where i lay conceiving that i wept and cried out because of the pain of mine infirmity was taken with trembling and began to shed tears whereby other ladies who were about the room becoming aware of my discomfort by reason of the moan that she made who indeed was of my very near kindred led her away from where i was and then set themselves to awaken me thinking that i dreamed and saying sleep no longer and be not disquieted then by their words this strong imagination was brought suddenly to an end at the moment that i was about to say o oh, beatrice peace be with thee and already i had said o oh, beatrice when being aroused i opened mine eyes and knew that it had been a deception but albeit i had indeed uttered her name yet my voice was so broken with sobs that it was not understood by these ladies so that in spite of the sore shame that i felt i turned towards them by love's counselling and when they beheld me they began to say he seemeth as one dead and to whisper among themselves let us strive if we may not comfort him whereupon they spake to me many soothing words and questioned me moreover touching the cause of my fear then i being somewhat reassured and having perceived that it was a mere fantasy said unto them this thing it was that made me afeard and told them of all that i had seen from the beginning even unto the end but without once speaking the name of my lady also after i had recovered from my sickness I bethought me to write these things in rhyme, deeming it a lovely thing to be known, whereof I wrote this poem. A very pitiful lady, very young, exceeding rich in human sympathies, stood by what time I clamoured upon death, and at the wild words wandering on my tongue, and at the piteous look within mine eyes, 
she was affrighted that sobs choked her breath. So by her weeping where I lay beneath, some other gentle ladies came to know my state, and made her go. Afterward, bending themselves over me, one said, Awaken thee, and one, What thing thy sleep disquieteth? With that, my soul woke up from its eclipse, the while my lady's name rose to my lips, but uttered in a voice so sob-broken, so feeble, with the agony of tears, that I alone might hear it in my heart. And though that look was on my visage then, which he who is ashamed so plainly wears, love made that I through shame held not apart, but gazed upon them. And my hue was such that they looked at each other and thought of death, saying under their breath, most tenderly, O oh, let us comfort him. Then unto me, what dream was thine, that it hath shaken thee so much? And when I was a little comforted, this, ladies, was the dream I dreamt, I said. I was a-thinking how life fails with us, suddenly after such a little while, when love sobbed in my heart, which is his home, whereby my spirit waxed so dolorous, that in myself I said with sick recoil, Yea, to my lady too this death must come, and therewithal such a bewilderment possessed me, that I shut mine eyes for peace, and in my brain did cease order of thought and every healthful thing. Afterwards, wandering amid a swarm of doubts that came and went, some certain women's faces hurried by, and shrieked to me, Thou too shalt die, shalt die! Then saw I many broken hinted sights, in the uncertain state I stepped into. Me seemed to be I know not in what place, where ladies went through the street like mournful lights, ran with loose hair, and eyes that frightened you by their own terror, and a pale amaze. The while, little by little, as I thought, the sun ceased and the stars began to gather, and each wept at the other, and birds dropped in mid-flight out of the sky, and the earth shook suddenly. And I was aware of one, hoarse and tired out, who asked of me, Hast thou not heard it said? Thy lady, she that was so fair, is dead. Then, lifting up mine eyes, as the tears came, I saw the angels like a rain of manna, and a long light flying back heavenward, having a little cloud in front of them, after the which they went and said, Hosanna. And if they had said more, you should have heard, then love said, Now shall all things be made clear. Come and behold our lady where she lies. These wildering fantasies then carried me to see my lady dead, even as I there was led, her ladies with a veil were covering her, and with her was such very humbleness that she appeared to say, I am at peace. And I became so humble in my grief, seeing in her such deep humility, that I said, Death, I hold thee passing good, henceforth, and a most gentle sweet relief, since my dear love has chosen to dwell with thee. Pity, not hate, is thine, well understood. Lo, I do so desire to see thy face, that I am like as one who nears the tomb. My soul entreats thee, come. Then I departed, having made my moan, and when I was alone, I said, and cast my eyes to the high place, Blessed is he, fair soul, who meets thy glance. Just then you woke me of your complaisance. This poem has two parts. In the first, speaking to a person undefined, I tell how I was aroused from a vain fantasy by certain ladies, and how I promised them to tell what it was. In the second, I say how I told them. The second part begins here. I was a-thinking. The first part divides into two. In the first, I tell that which certain ladies, and which one singly, did and said because of my fantasy before I had returned into my right senses. In the second, I tell what these ladies said to me after I had left off this wandering, and it begins here but uttered in a voice. Then, when I say I was a-thinking, I say how I told them this my imagination, and concerning this I have two parts. In the first I tell in order this imagination, in the second, saying at what time they called me, I covertly thank them, and this part begins here. Just then you woke me. After this empty imagining, it happened on a day, as I sat thoughtful, that I was taken with such a strong trembling at the heart, that it could not have been otherwise in the presence of my lady, whereupon I perceived that there was an appearance of love beside me, and I seemed to see him coming from my lady, and he said, Not aloud, but within my heart, Now take heed that thou bless the day when I entered into thee, for it is fitting that thou shouldst do so. And with that my heart was so full of gladness that I could hardly believe it to be of very truth mine own heart and not another. A short while after these words which my heart spoke to me with the tongue of love, I saw coming towards me a certain lady, who was very famous for her beauty, and of whom that friend, whom I have already called the first among my friends, had long been enamoured. This lady's right name was Joan. But, because of her comeliness, or at least it was so imagined, she was called of many Primavera, Spring, and went by that name among them. Then, looking again, I perceived that the most noble Beatrice followed after her, 
and when both these ladies had passed by me, it seemed to me that love spake again in my heart, saying, She that came first was called Spring, only because of that which was to happen on this day. And it was I myself who caused that name to be given her, seeing that as the spring cometh first in the year, so should she come first on this day, when Beatrice was to show herself after the vision of her servant. And even if thou go about to consider her right name, it is also as one should say, She shall come first, inasmuch as her name Joan is taken from John, who went before the true light, saying, Ego vox clamantis in deserto, parate viam domini. And also it seemed to me that he added other words to wit. He who should inquire delicately touching this matter could not but call Beatrice by mine own name, which is to say, love, beholding her so like unto me. Then I, having thought of this, imagined to write it with rhymes and send it unto my chief friend, but, setting aside certain words which seemed proper to be set aside, because I believed that his heart still regarded the beauty of her that was called Spring, and I wrote this sonnet. I felt a spirit of love begin to stir within my heart, long time unfelt till then, and I saw love coming towards me, fair and fain, that I scarce knew him for his joyful cheer, saying, Be now indeed my worshipper. And in his speech he laughed and laughed again. Then, while it was his pleasure to remain, I chanced to look the way he had drawn near, and saw the ladies, Joan and Beatrice, approach me, this, the other following, one and a second marvel instantly. And even now, as my memory speaketh this, love spake it then. The first is christened spring, the second love, she is so like to me. This sonnet has many parts, whereof the first tells how I felt awakened within my heart, the accustomed tremor, and how it seemed that love appeared to me joyful from afar. The second says how it appeared to me that love spake within my heart, and what was his aspect. The third tells how, after he had in such wise been with me a space, I saw and heard certain things. The second part begins here, saying, Be now. The third here. Then, while it was his pleasure. The third part divides into two, and the first, I say what I saw in the second I say what I heard, and it begins here. Love spake it then. End of section 7